Good afternoon. I'm John Iannuzzi for America's Dining and Travel Guide. Thanks to Pierre Wolf for allowing us the time this week on the show to bring you a conversation with Nancy Kenyon Jewey, General Manager of Los Poblanos Historic Inn and Organic Farm, an upscale 25 acre property located in beautiful New Mexico, just two miles from the Rio Grande Nature Center State Park. Los Poblanos is set among 25 acres of lavender fields, cottonwood trees, and lush formal gardens, making it one of the most magnificent historic properties in the Southwest. I recently spent a very relaxing three days at the inn, and after a tour of the property, General Manager Kenyon Jewey shared Los Poblanos' story with America's Dining and Travel Guide. The mission at Los Poblanos is to preserve the property for the community and guests to enjoy now and for future generations. And from the walk that we just took, it looks like you're achieving that goal. That's definitely something that we focus on on a regular basis. Really what the Remby family, the current owners, have tried to do and we continue to work on is offering a unique and authentic New Mexican experience. So there's a lot of history here. There are lots of stories here. We're lucky to operate and take care of these historic buildings that are designed by one of the region's foremost architects, John Gamim. So we really like to connect the guest experience to these day-to-day moments that you can look back in history and learn about the original mission and purpose for the property, connect to our agricultural philosophy and mission, and then also experience what we're trying to, to, to offer, which is an authentic and unique New Mexican vacation or learning experience. Now, everyone looks for something different in a vacation, but for folks who visit this property, and I'll get into some of the nuts and bolts of my experience here, but what should people expect if they decide to to check this place out? What we pride ourselves on offering is a very high level of service that is customizable. And so we want to offer an experience depending on what you're looking for. So we have a lot of people that will come here for health and wellness related, not vacations, but perhaps a getaway, a time to recover from an illness. And they're looking for peace and quiet, relaxing space. And we will offer that and accommodate them as much as possible. We have lots of families that stay with us and they want their children to learn about farming and we'll take the kids out and they'll harvest carrots with the farmers or pick lavender or learn about keeping bees. So it could be a very learning experience. It's very good for families or small groups. We have some guests that are here on vacation that want to check off 15 things on a bucket list and so we help them go on a balloon ride and ride a bike along the Rio Grande Valley and whatever it is see a road runner there are all these different experiences that we can I saw my first road runner by the way right out here congratulations (laughs) so people see this they decide they want to come and experience some of the things you just listed what's the first step that you guys take I want to go on a hot air balloon ride and I want to farm lavender and this is all done right here yeah so what we'll do when at the very first point of making the reservation um, when a guest calls us and we try and find out a little bit about what they're interested in doing during their stay and how we can make it special for them. We have lots of special celebrations, birthdays, anniversaries. Um, We have couples that were married here, you know, five, six years ago that come back every year to celebrate their anniversary. So we ask them, what would you like? Would you like to have our pastry team recreate your wedding cake and you can have your wedding cake and sit in the garden and relive you know the the memories of being married here uh some guests will return with kids you know the first time they stayed they didn't have kids and now they're like okay i want my kids to experience some of the things we did so we just try and find out what we can do to to help them we have business travelers that don't want anything but a strong wireless signal and a good desk and that's what they're here to do and they just want to work and so we'll help them choose the right room Lots of writers, lots of people from the film industry that stay with us. It's more about offering a customized experience for the person, depending on their needs and what they're looking for. Now, you mentioned the history of the place, and just by walking around, you could get a sense of it, but give us the, the two-penny tour here. Okay, so Los Poblanos was built in the 1930s by the previous owners, which were Ruth McCormick and Albert Sims. Ruth McCormick was a congresswoman from Chicago. She was the widower of Mark Hanna McCormick, and she actually took his seat in Congress and moved to D.C. And she met Albert Sims there, who was a congressman from Albuquerque. 
And they married and decided to purchase this ranch here in New Mexico, Los Poblanos. And at the time, it was a couple thousand acres. It was a very, very large ranch extending to the foothills of the mountains behind us there. Um, and she wanted to so sort of replicate uh, her life in Rockford, Illinois. She had a big working dairy farm and uh, a ranch there, and she wanted to expand on that theme. So here, the building where we're sitting it was come to be known as a cultural center where she had music recitals for members of the public, poetry readings, art exhibits, performances. You could buy tickets and, and spend the day here. You could check out books from the library, had a card catalog system. Uh, it was very much a community uh, location that, that she wanted her friends who were a lot of politicians and uh, big names that could come here or members of the public. The inn next door, the historic inn, was developed as their family residence. And she hired John Gamim to build both of these buildings and worked very closely with him on the design and development. But what the McCormick Sims family did was put into place a plan for this property to be used for hundreds of years. This wasn't a temporary ranch. It was very much a permanent part of the community that they intended to be here for a long time. So we're kind of playing off that theme and trying to research as much history and, and include it in our marketing and our stories and uh, continue what they put in place. And when you walk around and notice the great lengths that you've gone to to preserve what this was back then, that doesn't just happen by itself. Right, and what the current owners are keen on uh, messaging is that this isn't an old historic relic that sits here and nobody can touch anything. This is very much a living museum, a place that you can interact with the buildings, stay in the rooms that John Gamim built for this family, ask questions, experience the space. It's one of the reasons we recently received a very incredible award from the National Register of Historic Places because it's not a museum. It's something that we want to teach and learn and experience and have our guests share that with us rather than just kind of walking through the space. So you see today here they're setting up for a wedding. This setup, these tables, the events that are held here, you could feel like this was happening in the 1930s or now. It should have a sense of timelessness about it that is very active and alive and dynamic at the same time. And as far as the, so we've talked about this, this part, as far as the farming and this is something that seems to have taken on a life of its own. We discussed how the lavender started maybe 30 years ago, 20 years ago, and now it's it's a big part of attracting people here. Yes, and so a big part of the history here is agricultural, and this was always ranch lands, and it had a big experimental agricultural history as well, and so the original owners grew sugar beets, which was a crop designed to reduce America's dependence on cane sugar, and so that was sort of a test. Can we process beets into sugar, and will it take off as a cash crop? Along that theme, the owners had traveled to Provence and loved lavender and realized the similar similarities on the climate. And lavender has a lot of potential as a cash crop. You can make value-added products like soaps and lotions, what you've used in your room. Also, it's a sustainable crop. It doesn't use a lot of water. It doesn't. It likes a lot of sun, dry, sandy soil. So it kind of fit in perfectly to our sustainability mission as well as continuing the agricultural history. And then having our kitchen gardens actively used and farmed and the majority of the food from that is on our menus either comes from our kitchen gardens here on site or local farmers and growers in a very very small food shed radius of farmers and network that we work with. And so that's just a way to continue the agricultural history, which was actually throughout the Rio Grande River Valley since the 1700s. This isn't a new thing that we came up with. We hear some of the nature around us. I thought it was kind of interesting that this is only 10, 15 minutes from the Sunport. That's correct. And we feel, I, I think I can speak for a lot of the employees and our guests that visit, it's sort of an oasis. You feel like you could be anywhere. We have people that come here that say, oh, this reminds me of my mother's farm in Spain or whatever. And so it has this sort of quality of being a unique location. But what we've been able to connect to, we have a lot of local, wonderful local partners in Albuquerque. Albuquerque is really a diamond in the rough. There are all these unexpected experiences. We were earlier talking about the biopark. The hot air balloon rides are some of the best in the world because of the air currents that happen over this city. The Sandia Mountains are just stunning. So we kind of try to, to fit in with the unexpected experiences that you can have here in Albuquerque. And yes, we're 15 minutes from the airport, 15 minutes from most downtown offices, very easy to get around and, and access, but still you feel like you're away from it in a sort of rural setting. And talk to us a little bit about the growth that's happening here. I think that's a good sign. And it's happening without impacting the experience of 
the people who are uh, enjoying their vacation here. That's the idea. And so one of the things that we noticed over the years, we have a long-term sustainability preservation plan that there is a certain amount that we need to do to keep the business active and to generate uh, enough revenue to maintain the overhead of two significant historic buildings, not to mention a 25-acre property. And so when we have a lot of inquiries for destination weddings or uh, destination events like anniversaries, family reunions, the average sort of size for a boutique hotel, which we've been working towards, is 50 rooms, meaning about 100, 120 people. And we, over the past couple of years, have been turning away a significant amount of business because we are unable to accommodate an entire family. Some guests, like this wedding that's here, half of their family is staying down the road and the other half is here, and it creates some sensitive issues with where, you know, do you have to put grandma down the road or can she stay here? And so we really want to offer a place that everyone can be together and have that cohesive experience where you have your dining here, you're spending time as a family together, you're staying in all the guest rooms. We are adding 28 more guest rooms, which will bring us to a total of 50 rooms, as well as a larger restaurant space because we need more space for dining for people that are staying here. And then a significant retail expansion that isn't necessarily adding more products, but more of a unique shopping experience where you have a, li a little more breathing room and uh, space to enjoy some of the artisan products that we select from the community or that we make ourselves. And it's really about the guest experience. We probably overanalyze how does a guest feel when they're here. And so with these new buildings and the new expansion, it's the idea is to offer more amenities, offer more private courtyards, garden spaces, uh, relaxing areas for the guests that are here. We, we think about that a lot. And folks can take a little bit of this home with them or share some of it with their family by visiting the farm shop. But you also told me that some of these products are available in strategic places throughout the globe. That's right. So we have a wonderful network of retailers around the country, around the world that we've partnered with. And some want specific lavender products to tell specific parts of our story. Some are referenced that the account we have in Japan uh, was a woman who came and stayed here on vacation and just had a sort of life changing experience and knew that she had a market in Tokyo that would actually connect visitors Japanese tourists from coming from Tokyo to New Mexico and have that sort of full circle experience. And so we just partner with small boutique stores or uh, companies that are interested in the story behind our products as well. Anything that I didn't bring up that you'd like folks listening in Denver and beyond to know about? I think the, the main thing is looking at the expansion and the direction that we're headed. We are really excited about this. It's not going to change the look and feel of the property drastically. We're actually creating buildings on a part of the property that wasn't previously used. It was just open pasture. But I think what you'll find is that you can come here and have the same Los Poblanos experience and have the ability to enjoy, relax, and spend time with your family or have that same vacation that we work on so hard to remain as a timeless experience. So we are adding more, and I know that's making some people nervous, and some of our staff was nervous for a while, but now we're, we're getting used to the idea, and we know that we'll do it in a way that creates more value and enjoyment for our guests. We really are doing it for them. And again, if you read the um, reviews that folks put on, on social media, they will say, and I'll be one of them, that their experience was not encumbered at all by the construction that's going on. Glad to hear that, and that's definitely something that we worked hard at and we were worried about, but we are, we're lucky to work with a, an incredible team that is very sensitive to our guest needs, and they're on schedule, and they're you know doing what we are asking of them, and they know that the guest experience is at the core of our hospitality here. So, so again, regardless of the season, this is a place to visit, whether it's a, a stopover or a destination, come and check it out. Absolutely, and that's uh, something interesting that you bring up. A, a lot of our more seasoned guests, some of guests that have been staying here for 10 years or more, know that the time to visit for them, if they're looking for a less busy time, more quiet, they can walk around and feel like they're the only people here on the property. Uh, early November, early December are the strategic points where you can come. The weather's fantastic. It's really mild. Um, there's no one else here. It's quiet. You have the whole place to yourself, um, and our guests really know to kind of pick and choose depending on what they're looking for. It's a pleasure meeting you and uh, thank you so much for your time and I think that our listeners will be interested in learning more. And how can they do that? 
Uh, great. Thank you so much. Well, uh, on our website, lospoblanos.com, we're on all social media, uh, of course, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. I would recommend checking out our new blog. It has recipes and updates and exciting news from the farm. Our website has a link to our newsletter, which is called Noticias, and that will give new visitors an idea of when to plan their trip, if there's a cooking class coming up when they're going to stay or an exciting aromatherapy event. We put those all in our online newsletter, so that would be a good way to keep in touch. General Manager of Los Poblanos Historic Inn and Organic Farm in New Mexico. That was Nancy Kenyon Jewey. Again, if you are in the Albuquerque metro area, Los Poblanos is a must visit. You can learn more by going to lospoblanos.com. The Albuquerque Convention and Visitors Bureau website, visitalbuquerque.org, is another great resource. And finally, New Mexico Magazine at nmmagazine, all one word, dot com. That's nmmagazine.com. It's a terrific resource if you're planning a trip to the land of enchantment. Again, thanks to Pierre Wolf for allowing us the time this week to bring you along with us on our recent visit to Los Poblanos Historic Inn and Organic Farm. I'm John Iannuzzi. Thanks for listening and have a great Sunday.